uh, our next speaker is uh, Yu Zuo Lin from Los Alamos National Laboratory. And uh, I believe he will be speaking today about uh, seismic uh, waveform inversion and uh, using a hybrid of uh, data-driven and physics-based methods. Okay, uh, just to test it on the mic, can you guys all hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect, good. All right, um, hello everyone. So um, my name is Yula Lin. I apologize for uh, the technical issues here. Uh, some reason I won't be able to share a slide on my side. So uh, Carrie will be very nicely uh, uh, flipping back and forth uh, the slides for me. So um, so my name is Yusa Lin. For those of you who, uh, who, who do not know me, uh, I'm a staff member here at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. So um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers putting together this exciting uh, conference so that you know, we can share our results. And um, the presentation that I will be talking about today is uh, solving waveform inversion um, by using both machine learning and also looking at um, uh, physics-based methodologies. So this is the joint work of myself with my colleagues, uh, Dr. James Thaler, Dr. Brent Werberg, and a few students, including Yue, Jumping, Renan, and Jing Han. So next slides, please. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will first give you a um, rough introduction of why do we actually spending time on this, and and then I will kind of uh, you know scan through um, the traditional physics-based methodologies uh, as well as some of the cutting stage machine learning met methods, and then the focus of my talk will be um, the physics-informed machine learning-based methodologies for solving the seismic imaging problems, and then hopefully I, I can convince you by using some numerical results and and conclude my talk with some some conclusions. So slide three, please. So uh, subsurface characterization uh, is a important, but also a very challenging problem. Um, the reason why is it's, it's important because a lot of problems that we here at Los Alamos have been looking at relies on uh, understanding the subsurface structures. On the other hand, solving for um, the subsurface characterization itself is actually very technical challenging. Um, that is because one, the data coverage is bad, and um, solving for such a problem is computationally expensive, and not to mention that the human factor is unavoidable during the procedures. So this is where, a few years ago, we started looking at uh, additional methodologies such as machine learning to hopefully help us to alleviate some of the issues here, you know, we listed out here. So slides four. Uh, slides for, yes, thank you. Um, so for those of you who have never seen any subsurface problems, so this is a uh, exaggerated kind of a cartoon showing you what is a subsurface characterization. And here we're using uh, refraction seismic as the examples. Um, the rest are standing for the source. Um, the source meaning that it could be a TNT dynamite, that could be a truck holding a vibrator hitting the ground. And the bottom line here is that the source will be sending out uh, wave, seismic wave, and the wave will be propagating through the subsurface and bounce back and eventually pick up by one of the receivers, uh, which is denoted by the upside down green triangles here. So once the data is being collected, this is where our job getting started. So slides four, uh, excuse me, slides five. So now switch gear to the physics-based methodologies. Now, next slide. Um, so since we're talking about wave, right, seismic wave, this is a, a typical wave equation, you know, governed uh, phenomena. Uh, for the simplicity of the presentation, uh, I am using the acoustic wave, as you can notice here, but it may be worthwhile to mention that uh, the ideas and methodologies developed in this work can be totally applied to uh, other wave phenomena, including those more complex wave, including elastic wave, isotropic, uh, or even an isotropic. Now, as for um, the wave equation and its inversion, uh, the second equation here in the bottom, and that is a typical seismic inversion problems, that itself consists of two terms, a data misfit term and the regularization term, also of n. And those two terms are being co connected by the regularization parameter lambda. 
Um, solving for this problem is, on the other hand, very challenging. Um, next slide. So the challenging, the challenges actually come from three folds. One is that solving for the problem is uh, expensive. As I mentioned, uh, this is a nonlinear problem. Solving for it requires a lot of iterations. And second thing, the regularization could be limited, right? We're only looking at L1 or L2, and that itself is hard to choose. Uh, and the third thing, which is a good side of solving this equation by using physics inversion, is it's robust, meaning that you know if you have a good algorithm, you might apply it to other side as well. So next slide. I might speed up a little bit. I have nine minutes. So now let's switch our gear to the machine learning part. And next slide. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, looking at the three aforementioned challenges, uh, we actually developed a couple of different methodologies to alleviate those, those difficulties. One is that to resolve the uh, um, the computational issue, we develop a end-to-end -end regression operator help us to do the inversion. To resolve the limited regularization issue, we develop a learning-based regularization uh, help, hopefully, that can help us to better learn the prior and incorporate into the inversion procedure. Now, uh, the third part is actually the focus of the work. How do we try to deal with the robustness when we develop in a, a machine learning method? Next slide. So this is one of the work uh, that we are talking about using the end-to-end -end regression function. So the idea here is we try to learn a regression function directly mapping from the seismic data to the ge uh, geologic uh, features. And uh, for the detail of the work, uh, we developed in the paper uh, attached here, we call it inversion net. Next slide. So the fundamental idea is that uh, we're using a encoder-decoder structure, kind of a, you know, um, mapping a original seismic image um, to the subsurface image. So that becomes image to image translation. Um, so the encoder decoder uh, will actually help us to do in these whole translations. So next slide. The learning based regularization is helping us to uh, learn the prior directly from the data instead of imposing a, a uh, a straightforward L1 or L2 penalties. And the work uh, is actually developed and uh, published earlier this year in the paper cache. Uh, next, next slide, please. So now just looking at how we try to combine the efforts, not only coming from the traditional uh, physics-based methodologies, but also coming from machine learning. Next slide. So uh, the idea is actually all included here in these diagrams. Let me spend a few minutes talking about that. So as you can see, we have two data domain. One is the subsurface velocity model, and the right-hand side is the seismic data. So provided with original data set that is being labeled, meaning that we do have some velocity, and we will giving you the corresponding seismic data, and we can train that using the inversion net algorithm. And once the inversion algorithm has been trained, we can apply that to those unlabeled seismic data, which is actually annotated by this green dot. So that means we will have a, a smart guess or some kind of a preliminary result uh, from the velocity domain. And then we can further apply the fall modeling on top of that, and that will give you the seismic data that might not be accurate. But the good side of that is, well, now we will have additional pairwise velocity model and the seismic data. And another benefit of doing this is that we can incorporate those data sets together with the original label data, and that can help us to augment the data set and help us to, uh, um, to train our model. Um, and, and one more benefit of doing this algorithm is the follow modeling procedure is also incorporated uh, you know, when we, when we imp employ the follow modeling procedures here. So this is kind of a you know the major ideas and the uh, the idea has been published in a in a paper uh, um, actually uh, a month ago. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, to demonstrate the uh, efficiency and um, and the performance of algorithm, well, we apply that to a CO two leakage problems here. Um, so what we're interested in here is to to understand when we injecting the CO2 into the subsurface, um, if there is any leakage, if there's a leak is happening, when and where um, does the leak happen? So um, next slide. 
So this is a animations. So if you can click on the picture, hopefully the cartoon will be played. Uh, can you click on the picture? There you go. So there are three panels here. The left hand side uh, is actually showing you uh, the accumulated leakage plume or the accumulated CO2, CO2 volume. And the central image showing you uh, when the leakage is happening, how does the CO2 propagate in the subsurface? And the right hand side is the seismic data that is being collected by using the refraction seismic survey. So the target or the purpose that you know, for this tech, task is to using the seismic data from the right hand side to infer the subsurface velocity map shown in the middle. So next slide, please. Um, so we have a whole bunch of data that is being simulated. Um, uh, so the total size of the data is about 20,000. And here, uh, based upon different sizes of the lake, we will have large lake, medium lake, and small lake. And uh, we try to differentiate in terms of the percentage. And obviously, most of the leak of the data is happened when there's a large or medium leak. Um, only a small portion of the leak happened. But on the other hand, our interest is really looking at the small leak. Next slide, please. So this is where we pick a small leak, which is showing the left-hand side, the ground truth. And the right-hand side is the physics-based methodologies. I mean, it's doing an OK job. You can kind of see the plume somewhere in the middle. Uh, but unfortunately, the shape of the plume has completely uh, changed. So this is this is out of the physics-based methodologies. Next slide. As for the data-driven methods, uh, without doing any augmentation, uh, it's performing better than the physics-based methods. But the the shape is still somehow different comparing to the ground truth. Next slide. Now, this is using our methodologies. And obviously, our method visually is actually getting much better. Uh, if you can turn to the next one. So uh, you might not see the difference in the slides, but actually there are. Um, the augmentation techniques that we have developed can be, can be applied multiple times. So what you're looking at here is by applying the augmentation twice. So uh, uh, visually, the, the plume in the center is actually further improved. So next slide, please. This is the comparison of the computational time. Uh, FWMTD, the, the first line is this is the best method. There's no need to generate data, no need to training. All the time is costed in the imaging. Now, now, looking at the machine learning methods, you need time to prepare the data, you need time to train a model. But once this is being done, the imaging procedure is very efficient. Next one, please. All right, so to summarize on the talk, uh, we developed you know, a couple of different methods from the traditional methods, uh, also coming from the machine learning methods. Uh, we're comparing the accuracy and efficiency. Now, uh, incorporating physics is obviously important to combining methodology from these two worlds. And the method, method that we develop here does not limit only to these application. It may be applied to a much broader applications. Next one, please. Um, so this is the references that we published related to this talk. And next one. And we would like to thank for the funding support from DOE as well as from Los Alamos. And can you turn to the last page? One last page. There you go. All right. So since this is a presentation of Rice University, uh, I would love to draw your attention uh, to potential you know, opportunities with us. Uh, if any students here might be interested in coming to Los Alamos, well, I mean, coming, uh, quote unquote, to Los Alamos and working with us on these exciting problems, um, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email address is listed out here, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much, and thank you for the chair. Thank you. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, looks like some uh, very good results there. Um, to me, the the I mean, both qualitatively as far as the image looked very good, and as far as the speed up and the calculation, uh, can you give us some sense of, um, you know, a, you you were looking at milliseconds for the final calculation. Does does a millisecond uh, order of magnitude calculation open up new applications or possibilities versus? I think oh, it yeah. was 18 hours on the other one. 
Yes, definitely. This is one, actually, this is one of the major motivation that we're looking to uh, machine learning uh, domain. In other words, can we do real, real time imaging? In other words, um, when, we, when we're collecting data from the sites, when we have, you know, gigantic amount of the data, how can we try to come up with a result in a um, reasonable amount of time that can, that can significantly help us to uh, make, you know, decisions in such a way that we are not going to be wasting time, you know, let potential leakage happening and create, you know, potential hazards. So this is actually very important for lots of applications that we've been looking at here at most. Okay, we got a, a couple questions I'd like to ask you very quickly. Sure. Uh, so the first one uh, from one of our the the attendees is, I think you mentioned your data are simulated data. Yes. CO two leakage. Have you used any real, real data, real life data to evaluate your approaches? This is a great question. I love that. Um, hold on tight. We we are working on the manuscript. We are actually submitting it now. So uh, hopefully. Yeah, we, so the answer is yes, but the work is under review. So uh, yeah. And, and what what does the uh, what is real? Uh, I, I guess you would say ground truth data look like for seismic. I mean, it's not like we can go do no, uh, you can chop into the to the no. earth and look. So what what does that mean? Uh, it, well, there's unfortunately no ground. Truth. Uh oh, my mom is behind me. Okay, <laughs> there's no ground truth though. So all we can do is to compare our results with, for instance, physics-based inversion, and then we try to uh, evaluate, you know, the performance to see which one will be more realistic. And of course, you know, we will pass on the results to, uh, to you know, subject experts, and they will decide which one is better than the others, right? So it's hard looking at real, I mean, because as you said, no one knows what's actually happening in the subsurface. Um, but on the other hand, you know, synthetic data can be actually give us those confidence, right? You actually know the ground truth, you can evaluate based upon those results, looking at the performance, efficiency, et cetera. But yeah, so we, we do have those and- yeah. Okay, one very quick last question is, does the regularization learning allow the regularization to vary over space? Uh, well, the question is a bit vague here. I, I'm not sure what does that mean by regularization vary over space. Um, I can just guessing uh, if you mean if the regularization can be kind of a translating ideas from different space. Is that what, what you mean? Um, <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this is a written question, so I, I uh, I'm not able to clarify. Okay. Well, uh, if if the if uh, the uh, the person asking that is interested, we'll, we'll ask them to uh, contact you offline. Sure. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you very no much. Problem. Thanks for uh, calling in from uh, beautiful New Mexico.